Moscow, August 1939, a peacetime festival in honor of the youth of Russia. This is Red Square, flanked by the Kremlin, St. Basil's Cathedral, and Lenin's tomb. A sort of combined Labor Day and ring around the maple. From 17 republics covering one-sixth of the earth, speaking over a hundred varied languages, come athletes, folk dancers, musicians, farmers, students, young scientists, factory workers, and little Misha and his gang. of northern blonde that Hitler would like to be. This is jive, Mongolian style. In the groove with the Uzbeks, under a warm sun, young men and women celebrating creative arts. This was Moscow at peace. This is the way of life our Russian allies are fighting to preserve. Fascism, which had enslaved the German people, now threatened to enslave the world. It is November 7th the Soviet 4th of July. Marshal Timoshenko rides out to address his troops. The Marshal, a farmer's son from Bessarabia, began in the army as a private. He has climbed every rung of the ladder. Fighting man speaks to his fighting men. Men of the Red Army, the independence of our country is in your hands. The safety of our people, of our homes, our factories, our great farms and dams, these are in your hands. If you're called on to use your weapons, use them well. Always remember what you are defending. civilians. And these, women.
women of the Red Army. Transport pilots, nurses, auxiliaries. They've all since proved that they have remembered. Russia has been attacked. It has been at war since June. A ruthless enemy, backed by the armament factories of occupied Czechoslovakia, France, Belgium, Austria, backed by millions of brutalized young men, drunk with success, a juggernaut army of fire and steel which has never received a setback. This army is approaching Moscow. And Moscow citizens go all out for defense. Barrage balloon. This is our city, our street, our playground. If we are defeated on the outskirts, we will stop them within the city. homeless by the Nazis come to Moscow as they would to a mother. Tank traps. Life goes on. Not life as usual. A more intense life where streetcars run with an earshot of the guns. where citizens line up before a wooden desk in a park, presenting themselves volunteers for the most dangerous duty in modern warfare. These are the guerrilla fighters, the partisans who go into enemy territory. They build factories, bridges in peacetime. If necessary, they will blow them up now. We Americans know them. We use them in our own war for independence. Stern faces, brave faces. They expect no mercy from the enemy. Their home will be the woods. Their allies, night and surprise. Their password, liberty. Yes, they've had training before. They know what they're doing and why. And there are nurses with them, brave women, and they know what they're doing and why. Goodbye. Good luck. Mothers, wives, daughters are too busy to cry. They too are defending their city. Let me work fast, faster. Let me do my work well. This is for me, for mine, for us. The Nazis continue to advance. Hitler had sworn that he would enter Moscow on November 7th. 85 Nazi divisions were held at the city. They advanced but over a landscape carpeted with Nazi dead. And on November 7th, it was not Hitler who stood in. Calm, grave, without oratory, while the advanced panzers of the Nazis were 12 and a half miles away, the Soviet Premier spoke to the people of Moscow. The whole world is looking to you as a force capable of destroying the hordes of German invaders. A great mission of liberation has fallen to your lot. Be worthy of this mission. The war you are waging is a war of liberation. 
a just war. Death to the German armies of occupation. march out of the square. They're not returning to warm barracks or bound for home. From here, they're going direct to the front lines to defend their city. What does it take to defend a modern city? Soldiers, yes. Patriotism, yes. But they're not enough. It takes a staff of leaders, trained, residents, free of panic. General Zhukov, in charge of Moscow's defense. complex products of the home front, of science, of skill, of labor. It takes detailed knowledge of the arts of defense. Patriotism alone never stopped the Nazi tank. attacked. Monstrous ears catch the deadly hum of Nazi bombers. Throughout the raid, men and women quietly load tomorrow's shells. While yesterday's work is fed to hungry guns. what it means to defend the city.
going forward to attack. While at the front, the Nazis are held. These planes drop death in Poland, rode invincible the skies of France, laughed as incendiary scorched the heart of London. This one will ride invincible no more, or laugh. Not far away, Soviet pilots get their orders.
covers them. The front is wide. It is also deep. The enemy must be cut off from the rear. These planes are patterned on the American Douglas transports. did this maneuvers. But now it is on enemy held territory. This is in earnest. Skis, like men, come down by parachute. They start for their objective. Artillery seeks the range. They hug the Russian earth, but only for a moment. They must hold to their objective. In other sectors, others depend on them. This is correlated attack. planes with machine guns spitting. Forward again. This tank is hit. The attack goes on. Snipers take their positions. This is a village the Nazis hold. But it is a Russian village, and Russians will hold it tonight. mopping up. This is the enemy. The Aryan conquerors. A bit shabby. Up. 
falling out of their holes. Swastika learns its place. Nazi officers learn theirs. We have our casualties. Russian soldiers hit in battle, and Russian civilians who were not combatants. These Nazis, or Nazis like these, are responsible for this. A generation trained for murder. This has been their pastime. Old men, women, children, the cultured conquerors. Their pure blood circulates badly on Russian soil. A little change from the style of Berlin. Supermen, now prisoners. Supermen, now dead. The offensive gains momentum all along the line. This town was held by the Nazis for 45 days. A handful of survivors come out of hiding. This is the meaning of the word deliverance. And this. I get a bite of food from the Nazis. Take it, please. And this. Let me press your hand, and yours, and yours. And this. I have a grandson like you somewhere at the front. Soldiers can't stop. They fight their weariness, the cold. The task has only started. A last farewell from the turret of a captured Nazi tank. Life in the town begins again. Refugees return from the woods. The gorillas return. Alive. Mine are alive. days and bitter nights the city hall has been in the woods. The mayor takes over again. The processes of normal government are resumed. The citizens assemble. Comrades, brothers, our town has been liberated.
Cossacks like these covered 120 miles in two nights and then attacked an enemy caught by surprise. The corduroy road is built to support heavy tanks crossing thin ice. In this manner, the weight is spread. The villages too survivors return home. While beyond them, the drive continues. There are other towns, other fortifications. Part of what Hitler calls strategic withdrawal to leave this equipment. These trucks, these tanks. These guns will be put to work again, facing the other way. The general headquarters reports come in. New orders go out. the enemy here, there. Keep them running. Attack, attack. This was a thriving city. It too was burned. But Nazi freight trains loaded with stores remained. Not because they planned it so, but because Russian parachute troops reached this railroad bridge before they could retreat. In Mikhailov, the Nazis had no time to ship away the grain they had seized in the countryside. They set it on fire. 2,000 farmers were rushed into town. seemed hopeless at first. Then shovels were dropped from airplanes. The bulk of the wheat was saved. The boot is trampled here too. The Nazi footprint becomes painfully familiar. In the Moscow district alone, 38,000 homes were destroyed. 500 villages were reduced to rubble. This was the town of Istra. Here, Anton Chekhov, a world-famous writer, once lived and worked. His home was a museum until the Nazis came. This was a high school. A library. A kindergarten. This was the New Jerusalem Cathedral, classic in its architecture.
But on October 10th, 1941, the staff orders of the German army read, the army is only interested in putting out fires in such buildings as are to be used for housing military units. All else must be burned. And General Reichenau said, no historic or artistic values in the East possess any importance. And Hitler said, if a given point must be evacuated, everything must be burned to the ground and ovens blown up. This was the home of Tchaikovsky, the immortal composer. He was a Russian, but his symphonies belonged to the world. Here his manuscripts were collected. Here music lovers came as to a shrine. In final irony, Lohengrin, an opera of the German composer Wagner, lies on this Nazi scrap heap along with a bust of his Russian colleague. The old curator comes out of hiding. He finds it difficult to comprehend the work of modern vandals, of self-styled supermen who claim the right to dominate the world. This is the way it was a few months ago until the cultured Nazi came to give the word barbarian a streamlined meaning. reading his war and peace last night. Perhaps you know his Anna Karenina. The Nazi staff used his home as a headquarter. This is how Soviet Russia preserved it. This is how the Nazis left it. In the midst of a forest, they used this furniture for firewood. In this room, war and peace was written. They know a single art, these fascists. Destruction. hospital was sacked. This equipment stolen or smashed. This is Tolstoy's grave. But now he sleeps in uneasy company. Yet perhaps he smiles a little at these alien graves. If the Nazi dead had read his war and peace, they would have known their fate beforehand. They have found the living space for which they came, the only space offered to invaders. This is my house. I was born here. I married here. War, you say? 
No, this is not war. Not the necessity of war or even the accident of war. When women are counted as loot, that is no accident. This is the necessity of degenerates. Their agonized bodies lie quiet now, but their revenge lives after them. Isolated instance, policy. Not hundreds of bodies like these, not thousands, but tens of thousands. No words, no statistics can sum up the brutality of a generation reared by Nazis. Mass torture, mass murder by order of the high command. We know why we're fighting. We know it well. The German side road to Moscow, but their equipment points the other way. They left too hastily to change the sign. Along the cold stretches of the road back, the retreating supermen left the marks of their bestiality. They left also that which was not intended to be left. Equipment, supplies, tons of war necessities. These are the products of Nazi slave labor. They will be used in the cause of freedom. From November 16 to December 10, the invaders lost 85,000 killed in the Moscow area alone. Over 3,000 dead men a day. Good price to pay for a copy of Mein Kampf. The same area and during the same period they lost 1,400 tanks, 5,400 trucks, hundreds of planes, a thousand artillery pieces. is not paused. Moscow is far behind now. Advanced battalions approach Kalini. Try to 
make a stand here in one of the bloodiest battles of the war was fought. The street fighting was savage. Not everything is unpleasant in war. These people are the city. Not the shattered walls, the gaping windows, the empty ruins. They will rebuild. It is a solemn moment when your own flag is raised again. army, no time to celebrate. Beyond are other towns, all the way to the border. Beyond the border are other countries, martyred, outraged. They look to the free peoples for their liberation. Not far from the front lines during a temporary lull in the battle, assembly is called. A struggle where heroism has been so common that it walks with each anonymous soldier, special men can still be singled out. They've come from 17 republics. They're of many nationalities, of varied complexion and feature. time-honored ceremony, General Bielov kisses the flag of honor awarded to his division. This town is over 60 miles from Moscow. Nazis are entrenched in the building across the avenue.
the first Soviet newspaper in months. A guerrilla poster. The enemy will not escape us. The retreating Nazis have not entirely gone. Their work remains. No accident, no necessity. A half page from the blackest, bloodiest record in human history. You will not forget this, and the free peoples of the world will not forget. For this, and this, This is their achievement. This is their claim to immortality. We will remember. We will remember. We will remember. On this historic battlefield in 1812, Moscow struck back once before. This is Borodino, where Napoleon's army was broken. Now a new army moves past to crush a new invader. Our own General MacArthur said this about the battle for Moscow. The scale and grandeur of the effort Mark it as the greatest military achievement in all history. This is what a people can do. In a dark hour, the will to victory found victory. The fighting unity of China, England, the United States, the Soviet Union, all the other free peoples must, can, will ensure final victory on all of us rest the mission of world liberation.